The traditional wero or challenge of the New Zealand Maori. The dart is accepted. The visitors come in peace. These are a group of 75 young performers from tribes all over New Zealand. They have come to Manatuki Marae near Gisborne for a two week summer school in the traditional Maori performing arts. Mr. Tom Dennis, elder of the Rongo Fakata, the host tribe. My people has always looked to me as a speaker on the Mariahs. The welcoming speeches are an important part of the Maori meeting ceremony. After 150 years of European colonization, the traditions of the original New Zealand culture have been on the wane. This summer school will attempt to revive some of these traditions. The school is organised by the New Zealand Māori Theatre Trust and at its conclusion, 30 members will be selected to form a professional theatre company to tour the world. This has long been the ambition of the principals of the Theatre Trust. Well, I didn't think I'd see the day when we established the Trust four years ago that we'd be here today with 70-odd pupils in a summer school. Peter Love and Peter Keha, administrators of the Māori Theatre Trust and in the words of Peter Keha, well, the main purpose is to uh, perpetuate Maori culture. Now, those are the fundamental, fundamental positions of the Taya. That, or that. Now, don't forget, the striking edge is still in the front. The Taya is primarily a defensive weapon. It's not a ta an attacking weapon at all. My main task, actually, is to ensure that uh, the, the tutors, or the whole school in itself, is not going too far away from tradition. Mr. Nan Amahau, elder of Tiarawa tribe. Apart from such recognized experts as he, there are other tutors whose functions are quite different. Now we're going to have some vocal technique based on one of your own Maori songs, Meho Manareri. We're going to start on the vowel sounds of Me, He, Manu. All right? Now, with me, he, manu, I want you to control your breath so that we have me, Dick Johnston, producer. First of all, I've been contracted as producer of the World Tour program. And secondly, I'm here as a tutor specialising in stagecraft and movement. To transpose it into the medium of the European theatre. We can gain a lot of the, uh, the un... Uh, well, the things that have been lost. Well, the main thing is that people are learning things, you know. And this is what's important. What's the matter? Tommy Tarima, composer of contemporary Maori music. Well, I'm on, I'm one of the board of trustees, and at the moment here, I'm making the capacity as one of the tutors. Uh, poi. <laughs> What about her? Oh, Adelaide, where are you?
Mr. Moni Taumanu, elder of Natiporo tribe. My job is to teach the haka part, that's the boys. In each of the four items they have already learnt, I always take back to the beginning and the explanation and the base of each of those four items. No one really knew what to expect when they got here, uh, and therefore they were all trying very hard to be part of the school. This is very important. And, and generally the atmosphere is good, the food's good, so they're happy. The whole idea of the school is, is tremendous. If this school didn't start at all, I don't know how we're going to bring up this Maori culture, because I know it's dying out fast, very fast. This is unlikely to be the fate of the students, who are well catered for by the local tribe. They are also fed some of the facts and legends of their history. Now, I'm my wife of Kaumunu. Now, you all, all those who know the genealogy of Kaumunu, well, where all we come from, Kaumunu. Now, Rongo Mai Wahine, that you had a song made up for him, purposely for Rongo Mai Wahine. Now, the story of Rongo Mai Wahine, and it's a great story. You want to read that story, and you got that story. But I can't tell you in English, because the, uh, it's too sacred to tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be pointless my trying to adapt their style to my own because, I mean, it wouldn't be possible. Uh, what I intend to do is stick completely to the traditional uh, material as regards hakas, action songs, poise, where the choral stuff is at work. I'm going to add some modern dance versions of what they do, but there'll be no Māori movement at the same time. There's a large choir section in this program that's going overseas. Go. Alan Barker has worked in many Australian musical shows. My position in the school is as musical director and music tutor. My job has been to make them aware of things like variations in volume and attack, uh, clear enunciation of words, which they have grasped remarkably quickly. I'm a trustee and, and uh, I'm the director of the summer school. Okay, now let's... Puo Katane. I also assist Alan in his music department. I had arranged all the music. Having worked on this song in the last few days, I want you to think of four things now. These are dynamics, louds and softs, clarity of words, and of course, in addition, singing the right notes at the right time. Let's try. <laughs> Oh, yes, I think all the voices have grown in size yes. since they've been at the school. <laughs> Really anybody did themselves any damage. Uh, I must uh, tell you that 
tell everyone, though, that today's recording... The, the degree of concentration is far, far At steerage committee meetings, tutors and administrators discuss the progress of the school. Well, especially to the, I, 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 guess, I, I feel it's, um, they must have their free time. They must be allowed out to enjoy themselves. Gathering sea eggs and shellfish for the Saturday night hungy. At the hungy, the food is cooked in traditional Maori style, in an underground oven lined with rocks heated red hot in a fire. When the food is judged ready, it is exhumed and eaten. Everyone lives on the marae, the girls in one meeting house and the men in another. We selected these people from something like 400 people who auditioned and uh, there's no doubt about it that um, the job of selecting a world to accompany out of those that are here is going to be a pretty tough one. The extent of concentration here is absolutely enormous. They can really apply themselves and they do and they're working extremely long, long hours, far, far longer than you could with a normal rehearsal period. They're very, very attentive. They're disciplined, and they are a hard-working lot. they go home, they will remember that. They will remember the lessons in Māori tanga that they've been taught. Well, I think it's going very well. We're very satisfied. And then this is pretty fantastic what's happening here, because probably never happened before, you know. Little George Hanare, probably one of the best performers in the country. The, the thing is, he's been doing these things for years. He had no idea what anything meant. And he's having an absolute ball. Not all the movement is traditional. Deirdre Tarrant. Well, I was asked to come up um, to take movement classes. Really, when I came, I had no idea what they wanted me to do, other than sort of exercises. But since then, it's developed into something more than that. Well, the first purpose is, of course, for, for stamina, to see the, the people who can really last through that movement class and still get going at the end. Very hard work. I fancy those jokers doing this. <laughs> that I guarantee you, if they were told to do that before they come, they'd never come. Why not leave this if, uh, this ballet for the 30 that's going over? No, stop that. Now, can we just take it back again, please? Feet apart. The Trust has had a lot of criticism uh, over the last few years. I don't think it's fair at all. Particularly amongst the old people, because they're very reticent to give their culture out. They will be behind the whole scheme? Well, it's, you know, it's hard to make a leopard change its spots over, overnight. Let's put it that way, shall we? <laughs> <laughs>
there is a need at the moment for Maoris to write their own melodies and their own uh, dances, you know, keeping them within the Maori idiom. And this is what I've tried to do with several songs. <laughs> Now we're going to show the world initially what entertainment we can do. From a Maori point of view, from a traditional point of view, I think uh, uh, it will be quite good. <laughs> hungry for knowledge on Maori culture and um, it's been thrown at us and everybody's grabbing it. I thought the aims got lost somewhere along the line. The companionship with all the blacks is terrific. I've made many friends. It was just like a competition getting up and just seeing how good you are in comparison with the next person. The work itself has been quite strenuous. I've really enjoyed it. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been a great boost for me anyway. Wish could go on and on and on. <clears throat> Well, uh, I'm happy. I'm, I really am. Of course, I've had a few beers under my belt. If you're born a Maori, you are a Maori. It's in the heart. It's been stimulating, and it's given me uh, consolidation in, in my heritage. 